Hi everyone. So today we're announcing ClickBytes for ClickHouse Cloud. For this announcement, I'm joined by ClickHouse's PM of Integrations, Rehad, to talk about why things that you would normally associate with plumbing are going to change your experience with ClickHouse Cloud. So Rehad, what exactly is ClickPipes and why should I care about this feature? Hi Dale. Hi everyone. I'm uh, pretty excited about this feature, to be honest. Uh, you can think of ClickPipes as our attempt at providing the managed integration experience, part of ClickHouse Cloud. And with this, you can basically start ingesting data from remote data sources into your ClickHouse Cloud service seamlessly uh, under a minute of setup maximum. Uh, using a few buttons, you just set up your job and start ingesting, allowing you to really focus on your real-time analytics use case. Okay, that makes a lot of sense to me as someone who uses our product every day. I'm hoping it's gonna save me a considerable amount of time when I go to load data. Uh, maybe you can show a, a demo though to make this a little bit more concrete for our listeners. Of course, so let me open up our cloud UI. So, so far here, it's our usual experience. I have a few services running. Let me connect to the SQL console of one of these services. So this is, uh, ClickHouse Cloud experience. The SQL console is where I can basically access my tables, write queries, save them. But the new entry here is called imports on the left. By clicking on it, you get access to this new experience. At the top, there's a summary table. We'll get back to it later. You have options to upload data from your computer to access data on remote URLs. But ClickPipes is this button here in the middle that allows you to ingest data from Kafka. If you click on it, you'll see that you can pick either a Kafka broker from Confluent Cloud or from open source Kafka providers as well. And using that, basically, uh, you can fill out a small form and start ingesting data. You'd ask me uh, why Kafka. So let me just put a name here, demo one, put a description, a consumer group, and my Kafka broker. We decided to focus on Kafka first because it's the main real-time kind of data source. We'll be expanding the list of connectors uh, in the future. We support the JSON data format at the moment. And here we prompt the user with a topic selector. I have prepared a topic containing data from the trips uh, data set, which is basically New York City taxi trips for seven years. and looks like it's the right data set. So I jump to the next screen where I can decide how to match the data from Kafka with my table on ClickHouse. So I have a choice to make. It's either a new table, so I need to give it a name. I'll call it my uh, new table or my new trips, let's say. And then here I have a visual experience where I can basically decide how I want to create this table, what type of engine should I pick, how I want to order the data. I say I want to order it by drop of date. I can decide to remove some field. Let's remove store and forward here. And we have a real time review here of what the table will look like in ClickHouse. Or I can decide to use an existing table and use one from the list where we will have then to map fields from Kafka to fields in the destination table. We see that we also display the inferred data types here. Let's go back to new table, uh, give it the name, my new table 99 and hit next. Here, we kind of decide how we want to handle exceptions. So you can have many issues like connectivity, networking issues, or even malformed data in your topic. So for that, we create an associated table with the postfix underscore error, where we keep these errors and malform data for a week so that you can react to it. You can decide to re-ingest or you can decide to just drop it. Hitting complete the setup will register my ClickPipe job in ClickHouse Cloud and will start basically provisioning this uh, experience for us. I see that I successfully created this ClickPipe. It is actually provisioning at the moment. And this summary table shows all the ClickPipes that I have running. These are continuous ingestion jobs. So we keep injecting data from the remote brokers as it comes. And we have a very low latency of putting these events from the remote uh, broker. And we have a few controls here. You can either check a sample of the data from the source. The source here is the 
Kafka broker in that case because it's a Kafka uh, click pipe. Destination is the table on my ClickHub service. I see that we already have data in this table. I can go ahead and explore the full table if I want. And I see that I have 20,000 rows that we pulled already from uh, Confluent Cloud in that situation. And we'll be pulling every new event that gets added to that. And that's the beauty of ClickPipe is that you don't need to set up anything. You can check the details here. I started this, it is running. I have a configuration and that's it. Basically, in a few seconds, we have an active job monitoring my Kafka brokers and ingesting this data in my ClickHouse cloud service. Well, I personally find that quite exciting. I can see uh, that's saving me an awful lot of time. Uh, hopefully our audience are also quite excited about this new feature. Um, so, Riyad, I understand that this is currently in private preview. If I was a user that was a ClickHouse Cloud user or a potential user, how would I go about testing this right now? Yeah, so at the moment, uh, it's in closed private preview. You can request to join the waitlist for this feature. You just go to our website, clickhouse.com slash cloud slash clickpipes. There's a form you can fill telling us a little bit about your Kafka setup and your use case and click on join the waitlist. We'll notify you once a slot is available for testing. So you, we will activate it for your ClickHouse cloud organization. You'll be able to start running ClickPipe's job. We're doing that for a few months because it's a important feature for us from a reliability perspective. We want to test it thoroughly, make sure we scale seamlessly, make sure we handle, I don't know, failure scenarios uh, gracefully, et cetera since we are dealing with moving data from point A to point B. And uh, after a few months of running in private preview, we will flip the switch to a publicly available feature uh, and hopefully GA click pipes around the September timeframe. Okay, great. And uh, obviously Kafka is the, 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 the first data source here that you're, we're supporting. Uh, what are the kind of long-term roadmaps? Like, do you have ideas of what's probably coming after Kafka? What do we expect early in late this year or potentially early next year? Uh, yeah, so we have a pretty good idea of what we want to add next. Our focus will start with uh, streaming sources of events first. Uh, so Kafka is the main one, but there's like a whole family of cloud event providers like Amazon Kinesis, like Google Pubs, uh, Azure Event Hub. So these are uh, the ones we will be tackling first. But we're also curious to hear from the user base here what they need uh, next. We can explore things from monitored object storage changes to CDC use cases. All of these are very different, uh, let's say, use cases and they have different requirements. So we want to take our time, uh, work around this with our design partners in the community to make sure we provide things that are relevant to users. So. We are not very prospective from that sense. Uh, we are waiting and looking forward to hear from the user base here. Okay, great. I look forward to seeing how this evolves over the next few years. Um, well, I think that's everything. Thanks for everyone for listening and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks everyone. I hope to see you in the private preview.